Hi, Fritz. Thanks for joining me on a coffee break. Hey. I have a topic I'd like to talk to you about. I'm or curious. I'd like to, like yeah. to hear um, and learn more about uh, from mm -hmm. you. And that's uh, the topic of connection. The, but connection, yeah. Uh, that's, I think it's one of my favorite themes. If it's OK, I would like to go over quickly what I've understood of your model and where I have heard from you where the connection comes in, especially. You have a model that tells us that the groups of people or teams can be in different phases. Can I say phases? Is that the right word? Yeah. Yeah. And these phases are um, either reacting, active, or proactive. In the case that we are in a reactive mode, we are working on a content level. Mm -hmm. And in that case, as a leader, we, we are acting as an expert. Yes. What we want is to, to become more active and eventually more proactive. And in order to get from this reactive phase into an active phase, we need connection. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. That sounds pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Is that easy? Well, I guess uh, it's more easily said than done. Okay. Uh, for example, in the context of a group, especially in a business environment, the word that I'm using in the model is uh, it's not just having a little chat uh, because we can have a chat on a content level. For example, uh, we work in a team and I ask you, did you do this? Because I need it for that. And that's also a connection, but that's not what we mean here. Connection has something to do with um, more deeply understand one another, not only on the content level, but also on the level of the relationship that I ask you, so how is this to you? Is this okay? How do you feel? What do you need? Hey, that's interesting. It is about getting into a connection beyond behavior because behind behavior we have our feelings um, and our needs and when we connect on that level we more easily get to uh, a common ground but to get to that level that is not always easy that is a challenge sometimes because i can think hey um, you asked me this about what i had to do i feel annoyed but I don't want to lose the relationship with you. So I give you an answer on the content level, but I don't tell you what I really actually feel. Then we are not really connected. Connected has something to do with um, trust, being open, leveling with one another. And that's the birth ground for a creative level, the active level that you talked about. So it's, a, it's about feelings. Yeah. And trust. Isn't this what humans are really good at, making connections to each other at this kind of level? We're social animals. Why is it so hard for us in this context? I think we're, we, of course, we are very good at it. I mean, we, as a human being, long for connection. But think about relationships also with loved ones. That can be quite a challenge. For example, in the context of a organization, it can also get, say, complicated this organization is a dominance hierarchy. You know, you get people with a lot of power and people who have less power. When you as a yeah, human being walk into a dominance hierarchy, the brain, which is a social organ, falls back to fight, fly, free. So that is a function of the brain. And of course, we show more, I would say, sophisticated behavior, but our brain is telling us, be careful. This is your boss. He has an influence on your salary, uh, your opportunities, the kind of work you get next week. Be careful. So then we come, become a little more, bit more strategic, I would say. We cope with the situation, try to keep us uh, safe. And that means that we don't show ourselves completely. Connection gets lost. So it's protection. Yeah. We're it's protecting. Protected. We're protecting ourselves. Yeah. It goes the other way as well. Um, not just because somebody's my boss, but but also because I'm, when I'm the boss, something maybe to do with what we've learned about the way things are supposed to be in organizations. That things are supposed to be objective and not with feelings. I got to mm -hmm. be an expert 
uh, about stuff. I have to help people with information, making decisions, mm. and not get too close because who knows? You know, all these kinds of stuff that that, yes. that show up. Yes, there is an assumption behind it. it. Has to do with the story that we created about what you should and should not do in an organization. It should be clear content, scientific even. Um, feelings are for at home, but you know you. you don't just walk with your thinking into an organ. You go, you walk in there with your whole being. The idea that in this context of an organization, all it should only be about content, is actually, uh, I would say, inhibiting the full potential of a system of an organization. And when it's only about thinking, how do you feel when someone is motivated or when you are motivated? So the risk that we're running is that. Uh, on the content level, we can also, also, for example, disagree. But when I understand what your thinking behind it is, what your needs are, and I can explain what I feel about it and what my needs are, and we, then we can find a way to lift each other, to say, how can we find a way that's working for you and me at the same time? Sometimes our feelings, I don't like you or I'm afraid, so I close down, is in between getting connected. And then the system is not getting to its full potential. Vulnerability or being open precedes trust. Trust as a synonym for really having a connection. So you said, hey, for me as a boss as well, it's also how do I do this with people? I should not touch the feeling level, but stay on the content level. You as a boss as well, it can be very helpful, for example, to say like, hey, saw this happening in the team uh, make me feel a little bit uncomfortable uh, my tendency is now to take over do it myself but i'd like to talk to you about it what's going on here and how's it to you is that okay in germany there's so many beautiful words for example doing it like this is time beziehungsangebot it is offering a relationship of finding this out together and there you get to a, an active and creative level. So we use the wisdom that is in the system and not only in the head of someone who has the power, because then we, you know, we get into a lot of trouble. Well, look around in the world today. Starting to become more clear for me why this is so, so difficult to realize out, even though it's quite easy to say, and when I came back from the workshop you, you had, you gave, I came back and I was like, hey, yeah. And I started seeing things like this. And I was telling other people as well. It's like, hey, well, look, look at the connection. And I was explaining this uh, to them. And after a while, I realized it's not getting there. Of mm -hmm. course, in the workshop with you, I had quite an experience also of how it works. Mm -hmm. And just talking about it was probably working on the content level and not arriving there. But one other thing I also wanted to ask you, you uh, said in you said in this workshop as well, sometimes it needs the expert. Uh, so kind of understood that as if a team is in reactive mode, you can't work on a different level. You have to also find the level they're on. And sometimes you have to have that. So sometimes you have to be the expert as a, uh, as a leader. Yeah. But the fact that you're being an expert keeps you in the reactive mode. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I have to be an expert, but yeah. being an expert keeps me in reactive mode. Yeah. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. You know, the, um, the interesting thing is, what you're touching upon here, is that the model that, I, I, that we're talking about, it's called impeccable leadership, is operating from the idea that the behavior of the leader has an impact on the behavior of a group. Well, it's also sound, you know, not like rocket science, but when you are an expert, and that's necessary for to connect to the group because they want to know what's the drill here, how do we do it, what's the larger, what's the bigger picture, can you help me out on a content level to do my work in a good way? That's that's perfectly fine. You need an expert, and you need expertise, of course. But at the same time, when you keep being an expert, your people will not, well, they're, they're 
ability to develop themselves to become an expert will be limited if you give all the answers. So when you want to have them move to or develop to a next level, the active level, you need to do something in order to be the leverage for them to get to the next level of development. And that's why connection is important to ask them. So, hey guys, so what do you need? Uh, what do you want to develop? How can I help you there? How do you feel about it? Is there anything that you have, want to say to me so I can be a good you know, leader to you? So you start here from a discussion and go towards a dialogue. And, you know, this is, I mean, connection is not just zero or one. It is also a process. But that's the reason behind this model having several roles. These are aspects, attitudes, and leadership is all about being able to, to go from one role to another. How do you know what you need to do? That has something to do with learning to read the behavior of the group. And therefore are these developmental stages. Every stage has its own, you know, way of, of group behavior. And you can see in what phase a group is. And then the principle is first pacing and then leading. So, for example, when a group is reactive, uh, suppose they are a little afraid and they want you to give all the answers and just let me do my thing and then everything will be okay. I make sure that I cover my ass, so to say, and uh, everything is fine. That's reactive because there are a lot of you know, relationships that are not connected. When you, when you try to solve this as a leader by giving all the answers, taking over when something is not being done, you, you are having a strong position of power and of expertise, but the group stays the same way. So the next challenge is to connect. So what's going on here? And ask them what they need and what their feelings are. So by asking these kind of questions, you already move towards connection and a coach role and help people to get in a process to become active themselves. Now you don't have all the answers. You start asking questions. And the effect is that you move from reactive to active. So... All these roles are relevant, but it is about finding your way there. And this is why impactful leadership is kind of a, an explanatory framework that helps you to see what's, what's the dynamic here, what's going on, and how can I pace and then lead towards the next level of development. What comes to my mind now is that in my days uh, of studying about organizational development, you had these ideas about you need to have a burning platform. You need to have a burning platform because, you know, when people feel the need, then they will change. And then the consultants comes in and then they say, oh, people don't want to change. No, but think about the brain again, you know, with fight, fly and, and freeze. When there's a burning platform, your your brain is saying, wait a minute, whoa. So all these defense mechanisms are starting. You don't need a burning platform. Of course, you need, you know, that people uh, understand the urgency, but you do this in a dialogue. You do this in a dialogue, and then we can find a way, our way together. This is how you build a proactive system. Utilize the wisdom that's in the system. Fitz, I, I see that we're going to have to do lots of coffee breaks together. Would be great. Uh, I'm very Thank grateful. You. Thank you for your for sharing. Uh, and I, I, I think that can help a lot <laughs> of people, uh, I think. And um, looking forward to the next coffee break with you very soon, I hope. I'm honored. And, and uh, yeah, talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye.